hear me now? I can hear you now. I can always hear. I, I, I can hear you even when I'm in England. <laughs> Justin, just uh, announce yourself to a few thousand people down the other end. Yeah. And, and uh, into the camera. No, no, it's great to be here uh, with Max. Uh, the last time I saw him, he was on the back of a motorbike uh, traveling through Africa. Yeah, chasing you on a mountain bike. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And he still won. Until I fell off. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So it's good to be here, and um, I'm from uh, the Citrus Growers Association in Southern Africa. So we look after the citrus farmers and. South Africa and Swaziland how, how and Zimbabwe. Long, how long has the Citrus Growers Association been going in South Africa? Uh, since 2007, so oh, yes, about it's 23 years. It's relatively quite new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. We've been exporting citrus since 1906 wow. uh, from South Africa and, and the other countries. So, um, uh, But the association itself was formed after deregulation. Okay, and, and I always use this quote, and correct me if I'm wrong, that on, on average, South Africa exports in total four and a half million tonnes of fresh produce a year. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, uh, citrus alone, we export 2 million tons. Wow. So, second biggest exporter in the world after Spain. Okay. Spain number one, okay. South Africa number two. Okay, to, to which countries now? Um, majority of our fruit goes to the European Union. Um, so, if you if you take the UK out of it, which I believe has happened, uh, there's about 10% about to the UK. Well, we're in the transition period. We still don't know okay. what's going to go okay. on. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, about 10% to the UK and about 35% to mainland Europe. Right, okay. Yeah. And the other countries, about 20% to the Middle East, 16% okay, cool. into Asia, 5% okay. into, uh, into the USA, um, and about 10% into Eastern Europe, mostly to Russia. Okay, and is, is that dynamic changing? Is there, is there more product going to Asia now? Because of uh, currency differences and fluctuations and Brexit? And, and is it, yeah, is most, I mean, the industry has been growing at an incredible rate. So 7 to 9% growth in our exports every year. Wow. So uh, the majority of that growth is going into Asia. So as a percentage, Asia is growing. But in terms of, of actual volumes into the EU, it is growing slightly. Okay. And, and production levels within South Africa, does, does that is that fairly plateaued out? Or no. does it <laughs> uh, it's uh, one of the most frightening things is driving around South Africa and seeing the number of young trees in the ground, specifically lemon trees yeah. and, uh, and and easy peeler trees. Okay. Why? So, why? 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 Well, those two sectors of the industry have been doing remarkably well over the last five to ten years. So what farmers do when they make money out of a, a certain sector, they plant more of it. Um, and so you have the cyc cyclical thing where uh, eventually you plant too much of it okay. and then the prices start coming down. Okay. So we, we're trying to do a thing called breaking the cycle. So we're trying to open up new markets, find new users, find new uses. Yep. So in other words for lemons, yep. a lot of people are using it now for uh, for different purposes. Okay. People cutting it up and putting in their tea, putting in their water in Asia. So it's a big uh, growth thing in, in Asia is the and, health and did, benefits. And did you not t teach me when I was out in South Africa that there's a, a certain size of lemon that you want yeah. because the glasses in, in China are, are of a certain size, that the, the lemon slice wants to go in? Is yeah, so, so you're trying to grow a, a longer lemon because you can slice it up more. Yeah, okay. so, so definitely people have a liking for the elongated lemons and the seedless lemons. Yep. You don't want to seed in your gin and tonic. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so now you've done something very innovative that you've never been inwardly looking just towards South Africa. You, you have this partnership of citrus growers globally. So tell everyone what you've re yeah. recently with your colleagues, uh, international colleagues set up. No, we're very excited. We, we, we're forming the World Citrus Organization. Okay. And we're not going to claim to be the first to have done this sort of thing. There's a World Avo Association. There's a World Apple and Pear Association. And we looked across the fence and seeing what they're doing. And, and how successful they've been in growing their sector. So if you look at the growth of, of consumption of, of the different fresh produce, we as citrus have actually been losing out. And we see avos, etc., growing, growing, growing. Okay. So we firstly joined with Spain, which is number one yep. exporter, and we're number two. So we joined with Spain and said, let's go and form this, this, this organization. And let's bring everybody on board, every producing country that produces citrus. So we had an inaugural meeting yesterday. The statutes were accepted by, by everybody who was there. That was yesterday. Yeah, okay. yeah. And so we've got about 15 to 20 countries uh, joining in. Wow. Um, and most of the power, powerhouses in, in the citrus uh, world, the global citrus uh, game, are now part of the, this, the whole okay. world. And, and just give us an understanding. What, what, what sort of volume are you looking at with that, that number of, um, of countries aboard? Wow. Um, I guess we're probably about 75% of the total volume of exports. Uh, so, um, I mean, in terms of, of exports, we're probably about 4 million uh, um, tons. Okay. Uh, in terms of the production side, the biggest producer in the world is China. 
I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So we haven't got China on board yet okay. uh, because it's a little bit more difficult. Um, they don't have a central organization, an association that represents them. So we need to go and find out who we speak to there and how we get them on board. Okay. Uh, but we do have Brazil. Okay. Brazil is the second biggest. Yep. They juice 95% of their product. Wow. So we also have to look at the juicing sector and, and get them included and, 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 and decide how we we, uh, we, we include them in, in the activities of this new uh, organization. Okay, and, and so the key, the key aims of the organization is co collaboration to, to make the sector as a whole stronger internationally yeah. for the benefit of, of all the growers and everyone involved with the sector? Correct. So, yeah. so I mean, there are a couple of objectives. Uh, one is to, to provide a platform to discuss and have dialogue. Uh, the second is to get credible information together so we can send it out there and put it into, the, okay. into everybody's hands. And then uh, uh, thirdly is around promoting the sector, the, the health aspects of the sector, the, 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 um, uh, the nutritional value of, of citrus, so that the consumer can start associating uh, our fruit with a healthy lifestyle. Okay. So Justin, you've got a few thousand people in the fresh produce sector internationally watching this. Is there anything that you would want from them, uh, assistant-wise, to make this organization a, a success for the long term? I, yeah, I think that the, the most important thing is we would like everybody who's involved in the in the value chain um, to be part of, of this journey. So we have we have country membership, which are obviously driving it, the people that actually produce the product, but then we have an associate membership as well. And any com company can come in there, it's 500 euros a year, so it's not a, a huge fee. And, uh, and, and, and so uh, contact us. Um, Look up. Uh, uh, I'll put all the links on. Okay, you put the links up, yep. and uh, and please contact us on the secretariat. Find out more from us. It's not prescriptive. We it's the beginning of a journey. It's the beginning of an organisation. So we'll mould it as to the, the, the but, members. But what's very exciting is if you look at the success of similar organisations, and, and, and in some respects, it's a bit it's it's a bit odd that it's never happened before with such a major sector. Yep. But it has now. So it's on the on the basis that there's been success in other sectors. You're, you're bound to have success, but you need that cooperation from all in the all Correct. in the sector. Correct. I think we need visionary leaders in the sector to come together and have a purpose um, that we'll encapsulate in this new organisation. Okay. So talking about visionary leaders, here's one. Follow all the links to find out more about this groundbreaking organisation. And, and Justin, we wish you all the best in the future. I don't think you'll need it. I think, I think with, the, with the rise of the popularity, as, as you mentioned, lots of Asia, which I wasn't aware of, but just globally, anyway, I think it's exciting times for, for you and your members and your future members. Thanks, Max, and thank you for giving us this exposure, and, and thanks to all of you out there. Come and join us. No, no problem. Um, can I take this? I, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> It'll look very good in England, in the rain. Justin, I'll get you one. Justin, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.